that being said, I didn't mess up, but I was now following the instructions because I was getting ahead of myself. I was like, oh, I can do this. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dyes with Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sewing another dress. First off, if you are new to my channel and you like sewing, crafting, and thrifting content, why not subscribe? I would really appreciate it. If you've been following my channel for a while, I tend to stick to one style, which is the McCall 79. Four, eight pattern and then I just Frankenstein it up a bit you know I might take the sleeves of that the bottom of that shorten that you know and just just make a bunch of different dresses but using the same pattern well I have a habit of collecting vintage patterns yeah you see there's there's a lot there's a lot of vintage patterns in here I keep collecting these when I go to thrift stores but my problem is I never use them I never use them I can't keep collecting things and just not using it so I'm like you know what I'm gonna take one of these patterns and I'm gonna sew a dress the other day on my Instagram I posted a story asking what vintage pattern I should make next so on my Instagram I posted the four photos a is clearly the winner although C did come pretty close in second but not really close in second a is definitely the one that y'all picked and to be honest that was my top choice although the second choice with the the, the pants I'm very tempted to make so eventually eventually I will make that so this is the pattern that one and it's the one that I'm going to make like this thing is just falling apart I thrifted this not too long ago so this is one of the newer ones that I have thrifted. you know one of the newer ones to me that I have thrifted it is the pattern 6218 by simplicity and I actually looked it up online and uh, a few places are selling this for like 40 bucks I, think I paid like a dollar for it and part of me is like sell it Michelle get $40 the other part of me is like no Michelle you keep it for yourself and make all the dresses I'm gonna do the latter and uh, make all the dresses pick the pattern and I've picked the pattern within the pattern that I'm going to make and now it's time to pick the the fabric so I do have two choices this is my first choice here it was a thrifted bed sheet I think this is either a single or a double sheet it has the uh, elastic you know kind of part on it even though the elastics have seen better days it doesn't even look like it was ever used so this is option one I don't wear a lot of white because I'm just too terrified to wear white and that's why I'm like thinking about picking this one because if the dress doesn't turn out the way I want it to it's not like I wasted my most precious fabric if it turns out great that is awesome but if it doesn't then I can learn from my mistakes and I can use my good fabric next time I want to make it so this is option one and then this here is option two which is another thrifted sheet I think this one might be a queen or a double set and I really like it and I think what would be fantastic is this piece here could be the ruffles at the bottom of the dress there's like this ruffle so could you imagine it's already done for me and it has this cute little like detail right here I think that would look really great and the reason why I'm thinking about doing this one is one it's a very cute pattern it is a little see-through so I would have to wear a slip under it but I mean that's no problem I bought a slip for this reason because I always just make stuff out of sheer fabrics anywho but there might be more fabric in it and I don't know how much fabric I'm gonna need for this outfit um, so the other day when I did go thrifting which I do have a video for I went to Goodwill and there was the exact same sheet there so if I run out of this material hopefully it will still be there and I can go buy it but I don't want to go buy it if I don't need it I guess the next step is I'm going to lay out the pieces like the pattern pieces on these and see how much I'm going to need. And then from there I can cut out the pieces and then just start this whole project. A few of these have been cut out, say like this one here, someone has used, but like this piece hasn't been cut out at all. So I have to actually cut out some of the pieces. So that's kind of interesting. Also, all the pieces are here. All the pieces are in this pattern and I'm very happy about that. All of my pieces are cut out. I've just kind of laid them on my bed. So I have my back panels, my front panel, the bottom trim, the sleeve ruffly stuff. I have my sides, pockets, back pieces and front pieces. Now, what I ended up doing a little differently is that my front, back and my side pieces, I cut out four of each. Well, two of those, cause it's one piece, but there's four of those and four of those. Cause I decided I am gonna do a lining for the bodice. So it is a little bit more work, but I think the end result will be a lot better. Yesterday I cut out all the pattern pieces and I think that's the best 
thing for me to do is before I start a project, before I start filming the project, I'm going to cut out all the pieces because cutting out all the pieces is just such a tedious task and it is my least favorite part of a sewing project. Am I going to have enough fabric? Am I going to cut it properly? Am I going to cut it the right way? Because there's a certain way you have to cut things. There's just so many things that goes through my mind that just stresses me out when it comes to like cutting up fabric. So the whole reason why I wanted to do a lining in the dress is when it comes to like the raw edges, I don't like doing a rolled hem. I can never do them straight enough and they just never line up and all this stuff that I just don't really care for. So my plan is if I make the outer layer and the inner layer, put them together, sew them up, flip them right side out, press it, and then do a top stitch, it will have a very nice finished look. I'm trying to be a little bit more professional with the outfits I'm doing because sometimes I'm just sloppy and I'm like, it's done, it's done, but then I never wear these things. So I'm like, you know what, if I take the time now, maybe I will want to wear these outfits that I, I uh, keep making. I think today I'm really going to focus on that bodice. The bottom half of this is just straight stitches, fine, easy. I have to do a little bit of gathering, no problem. But the bodice is where it's going to like trip me up a little bit because there's more pieces and there's more like math and calculating and like where do I put things and all that stuff, all that fun stuff. So I still have a ton of fabric, so if I make a mistake and I have to cut another piece or, or something, I have the fabric to do that. Let's get right into pinning up the bodice. Also, I'm gonna do my best to follow the instructions that they're giving me. Normally I just do whatever the heck I want and I don't really pay attention to things. I have no idea what's the good side and what's the bad side. They look identical. Okay, so the next step it told me to do was to pin the ruffle parts to the good side of the the dress. Ruffled them, pinned it, and now I'm going to sew it in the sewing machine. And then the next step it tells me, lost it already, there it is. So then after this step, I have to put the liner in. And the liner, I'm just doing the exact same fabric because I had so much of it left over. Also, I don't know what happened to my white fabric. It's somewhere and I don't want to look for it. Sew this up and then I'm going to attach the lining of the bodice. Just did... So I just did this step here, so now I have to pin the lining. Okay, so about um, a half an hour ago, I was looking to see if I could find like any frilly things to like go on the ruffles. So I went through an old box of my almost things, and then I had uh, a sneezing attack and I kind of broke out in hives because of all the dust and how old it was and now my face is all red, so fun. That being said, I didn't mess up, but I was now following the instructions because I was getting ahead of myself. I was like, oh, I can do this. What I was supposed to do, which again, it's not a big deal, it's just a little bit more difficult to do it now, now that everything's attached. All the, these edges here, I'm supposed to fold them in and stitch them and then press them and then that way when everything is like folded together and I have to um, sew it onto here, if it's folded and then I put it over top of the ruffle, like I'm not gonna see any of those raw edges. It's, it's not a big deal, it's just a step that I skipped because I wasn't really paying attention to what I was supposed to do because the instructions, although they are laid out nicely for me, some of them just don't make any sense because I am not a professional sewer. So certain terms I don't pick up on right away and uh, I think it's something and then it's not so here I am just gonna quickly go to the sewing machine and fix what I did and then I can get back on track okay so it's day I want to say four maybe three of me making this dress I didn't film anything yesterday because I just wasn't in the mood for a camera to be on my face I had to go to my storage unit because I'm downsizing it so me and my dad were moving a bunch of stuff and then I was just like a hot garbage mess I didn't want to be on film but I did want to continue sewing so then that way I wasn't like behind yesterday I actually finished up the bodice and I didn't do too much from like the day before all I did I just added the side pieces I did didn't do anything else really. I've kind of discovered that it is actually a little too big. I did not think that this was going to be a problem. I thought if anything this pattern was going to be too small for me. And when I was reading the pattern it said miss and it also said size 14 and so in my head I'm like okay first off this pattern was made in 1974 or around that time. I just assumed that it was going to run a little bit small. Second it said miss on it so I just assumed that was for more of like a teenager size like a younger size 
size. So I'm like, okay, well, if it's a teenager size 14, it's probably going to fit me. It doesn't. It's actually a little bit big. And now I have to figure out what to do about it. This is what the bodice looks like right now. It's, it's looking really cute. And then like, this is the side. That's a lot of space in the back. I got two options. One, I take out this seam, this seam here, or two, I take in the back. So those are my two options. So the inside of this guy, this is like not stitched down. This is like the lining layer. It wants me to do a basting stitch, which is me just getting a regular needle and just like doing little stitches just to like tack it down so it's not flopping. Because here's the problem. If I were to sew this, it will be all like kind of bunched up, I think, but also it's the inner layer, so it doesn't really matter if it looks nice or not. Figure out this today, and then I also did something else. It's not, it's not a big deal, though. I attached all the skirt panels, just some straight stitches. I'm sorry if that is what you were looking forward to in this video was uh, me attaching the skirt together. I hate to disappoint you, but uh, it's just some straight stitches, and uh, I didn't film it. I attached the two back panels together, and then the one front panel. Now it did tell me to put the pockets in before I do anything else, but I am going to ignore that step. I am gonna add pockets. I'm not gonna like not add pockets, but I'm not gonna add pockets today because I don't know where I want them on the dress yet. It will be fine. After all said and done, I'll get on to what I'm doing today. First up is I have to gather the top. By gathering, I mean I'm gonna be doing a zigzag stitch over dental floss and pulling it. That's fine. This here is actually the bottom. Well, I guess it was the top of the bed sheet. It's gonna be the bottom of my dress because I really, really like this like little detail at the bottom. I do need to cut more of this like fabric off so it just kind of looks like, like that. But when I do attach it, it's gonna go like, like it's gonna this gonna go this way, but I do have to gather this too. So we're gonna be working on the bottom of the skirt today, and then I think if I'm up to it, depending if I get a little lazy and tired and end up wanting to play Animal Crossings, because I started uh, redoing my island. I'm actually making um, Vecna's house from Stranger Things. <laughs> but I decided to uh, build that on my island. Anywho, if I'm up to it, I will be attaching it to the top. And then tomorrow I have to go get a zipper to the sewing machine to do some gathering. I hate gathering. I got a bunch of uh, thread on me now, super. I did the gathering on the top, it needs to still be gathered. And then I also did it on the bottom, like the, the little ruffle part. I'm going to gather this up and attach it to the bottom of the dress. I sewed the bottom onto the dress. Bottom's done. For the top, what I decided to do is I decided to take it in on the back. This here is where I'm going to put my zipper. What I'm gonna do now though, is I am gonna attach this to the skirt and then I'm gonna leave this open as well as this part here because this is where the zipper is gonna go when I have the zipper. Something that I like to do is I like to pin all my points. So I like to pin my start point, my end point, and then I also like to pin, depending on the size, my middle point because then that way I know that this part here, I have to cinch just this in because what will end up happening if I don't do that is that I'll start cinching in really well over here and then when I get to the other end, I'll have no extra fabric so it won't have that bunched in look and then I'll have to take the whole thing apart. If I do little checkpoints, then I know like this has to all get ruffled in. Okay, so this is what it's looking like so far back still needs to get done. So I do need to find a zipper tomorrow. I would actually go today, but my car is um, the temperature of hell. That's how I describe my car right now and I'm not gonna get into that car. So I'm gonna get it tomorrow.
Uh, I ended up picking up this zipper here. I was really thinking about buying an invisible zipper, but at the end of the day, it's like twice the price of this zipper. So I'm just like, eh. Also, I don't mind the zipper showing. I'm fine. I'm not like a perfectionist that everything has to be looking like it came out of a store. Also like store quality things these days aren't that great either. So it was $3.65 and it is the 55 centimeter length one. I'm pretty sure this is the longest zipper they have. I probably could have went with a 51, but I think it was a difference of like 65 cents. And I'm like, I might as well just get the longest one just to be, uh, just to be safe. While I was there, I also picked up this here. Literally it says Rick Rack on it. This stuff here, just for some detailing for the pockets, like doing something like that with it. I think that would look actually really, really cute. A $3 and 25 cents. That's not too bad. And I'll have some left over cause I'm just doing it on the pockets. So today I'm going to add the pockets and I'm going to add the zipper. And then I also didn't do this yesterday, but I really should have. I'm going to trim the bottom of this guy because I still haven't done it. Didn't have any trim that looked like the trim on the bottom of here, but I mean like, it's probably a 30 year old sheet. I highly doubt whatever trim they use is gonna be found at my local fabric store. Let me just get right into adding the zipper and then we'll do the pockets and then that, and then the bottom of it and then that's it. If I ever say again, I'm gonna wait to the very last to put the pockets on, uh, Michelle, remind yourself to punch yourself in the face. Cause this, this was a nightmare to do. Put the pockets on before you attach the skirt. I've learned my lesson. But what I ended up doing here is I did not attach this because I wanna hand sew it. So I'm going through my yellow colors. And so far, I think that's the closest color. And like I have this bag that I thrifted. I think all the yellows in here are more golden. So I don't think any of these are gonna work today. I think my best option is to go with this color here. And I'm actually going to hand stitch this down. And I need to cut this as close as possible without cutting the bottom of the dress. I just need the, this stuff gone and just cut this little piece off, which I mean, yes, I know I should have cut it closer when I was cutting in the first place. And then that means I didn't have to do it again, but you know what? I didn't do it. But then once this is all cut off, I am done the dress. And the dress is done. I honestly think it turned out really, really cute. A few little things that I think would take into account. One, I think the sleeves, they could have been puffier. I could have made these a little bit more puffier, but I mean, they do look really cute. I definitely made it a little bit too big again. That's on me for not knowing what size I am, but also it being a vintage pattern. And I've already mentioned this in the video, but like when it says Miss 14, I'm thinking Miss as in like young adult, meaning teenager, it's gonna fit smaller so I'm like oh that would just be the right size apparently that I really do want to make this dress again I really want to make it in a darker floral color it was actually a lot easier than I thought to make again I think the only thing that I just didn't like doing is uh cutting out the pattern pieces once the pattern pieces are cut out everything just comes together really nicely but it's just the thought of cutting pattern pieces out freaked me out I do think I want to make the belt I'm not 100% sure the belt is really really cute I just didn't feel like cutting out the pieces at the time and the belt wasn't really a attached to this. It was more just kind of like an after thing, like, oh, you just tie the belt in a bow. I feel like these vintage patterns seem really kind of daunting and scary thinking, how am I going to make this? Is it going to work out okay? Like, it just, it's more complicated than what I'm used to. And it really isn't. If you are able to find this pattern, I suggest buy it. It's super easy. And I loved making it. Look at it. It got super dark out. I give it an eight out of 10. But other than that, I think this is actually really cute. And I would love to make another one. If you are new to my channel, like sewing, crafting, but mainly through thrifting, why not subscribe? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok, which is Fancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it. So y'all have a good day now. <laughs>